how to play from a real book for all musicians. That's the question we're tackling today. My name is Paul Toby from jazzmental.com. Thanks for joining me. We're going to be diving into the real book and seeing how we actually play from it. And we'll get there in just a second. <laughs> So welcome back. Today we're talking about how to play from a real book for all musicians. A real book meaning there is more than one. But today we're going to be looking at the original real book, what they call a real book one. Essentially what the real book is, is a guideline for musicians to be able to sight read music and perform without a whole bunch of written notes. In other words, it's going to give you a melody as a guideline and some chord symbols. So we're going to talk about the four things you absolutely need to know to be able to perform from the real book. And we're going to go through these one at a time. So the first one is you need to have an innate sense uh, or a learned sense, an experiential sense of rhythm. And so we're going to look at real book one. This particular tune is called When I Fall in Love. I was just actually leaping through the real book going, hey, is there something that I can demonstrate that I'm actually not that familiar with? And how would I go about playing this particular tune? So the first thing I notice is, is that it's in 4-4 time. And that innate sense of rhythm that I'm talking about is on the back beat. So while most people clap on one and three, two, three, four, really happy like, most musicians innately know that you need to feel two and four. So it's one, two, two, four, one, two. And all music has this, this backbeat to it, which gives it a real feel. So that's the first thing I, I notice when I look at a piece like this is like, where is that feel coming from? And then I also know that it's a ballad. And the reason why I know that is because in most cases, there's a lot of chord symbols, sometimes a chord symbol for each note. And of course, you need to be able to read first and foremost the melody, especially if you are a uh, single instrument player, saxophone, trumpet, trombone, and you obviously need to be able to sight read this melody. So let's take a look at the melody first. And of course, as a solo instrument or single note instrument, you need to be able to express that really well. Some great phrasing and just some really good feel. So the first is rhythm. The second is being able to read that melody and understand how to play it. Then the next thing is the most complicated thing, especially for pianists, guitar players, vibraphonists, people who have to play more than one note uh, per bar. <laughs> In other words, they're playing multiple notes at the same time. And that's where it gets a little bit tricky. Now, single instrument players need to understand all of those notes as well. They just can only play one at a time. So a piano player and a guitar player needs to string a bunch of notes together called obviously chords. And therefore you need to read and understand those chord symbols. So for example, let's just look at the first two bars where we've got E flat major seventh. To me, that's not just a simple triad like this. It's adding the seventh note, and then it's also adding any upper structure notes like this. So E, e flat major seven to me might sound something like this. And then the C, plus seven, that's a sharp five, like this. And then F minor seven could be F minor ninth or F minor 11th. And then B flat seven doesn't necessarily mean B flat seven, it means altered chords. So a good musician takes the example of the chord and then stretches it 
within the harmonic plate that they know and understand. And this, of course, is something that you must eventually learn over time so that you can make your music sound more rich, more full, and more like jazz in this particular case. Obviously, if you're playing popular music, there's less dissonance and upper structure notes, so therefore it makes it a lot easier. But most of what's in the real book is jazz based. And when you get on the bandstand and somebody calls a tune like When I Fall In Love, you should be able to do that fairly quickly. So let's take a look at the melody, the rhythm, and the chords all put together. And it might sound something like this. So you can see when I get into a bar like this, the whatever's written there is just a suggestion. For example, F minor seven to C sharp five to the seventh, it's kind of like I, I did this line cliche in the bottom. Everything is a suggestion, kind of like red lights for many people, <laughs> just a suggestion. So understanding this and learning this is obviously something that for many people is not that easy to do. You need a little bit of guidance and instruction on how to read chord symbols and understand what to play in the moment. So I would suggest maybe you head on over to jazzmental.com where we have some mini courses that you can take for free on how to get started deciphering chords and, and playing them in this context. So then the fourth thing, because of course we've covered the three main ones. One is understanding the rhythm, two is uh, reading the melody and performing that well uh, with great phraseology. The third thing is chord symbols and, and playing them well. And then the fourth thing is sort of like the pinnacle of what you should be able to do as a musician and that is take all of these suggestions from the real book and perform them from a solo perspective and that means finding other melodies and phrases to play on top of the suggestions so while in the previous uh, playing example I just showed you how to play the melody in this example, I'll show you a little bit of soloing that you should be able to do, and that means understanding the chords that fall beneath the uh, chords themselves. So let's take a look at that. So of course, 
sky's the limit on what you play based on the original notes that are written there and the chord symbols that are obviously just suggestions. So understanding chords and the way they uh, uh, fit with your soloing and the lines that you play, there's obviously some history there, some things that you can learn in terms of phraseology and the turn of a phrase, but just really understanding the scales that you need to put on top of those chords. And that's really what the real book is all about. There, it's just this guideline for you to, to expand on your creativity. And the more, obviously, knowledge that you have, uh, the more creative you can become. So that's how to play uh, from the real book for all musicians. Thanks for joining me. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Ask any questions you like below. And of course, um, make any comments you wish as well. And subscribe to the channel if you like. There'll be more videos like this on the way real soon. My name is Paul Toby. Thanks for your time.